Calling to order the Municipality of Monroeville's Citizens' Night and agenda setting meeting for Tuesday, May 7th. It is approximately 7.07 p.m. If you'd all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance followed by a moment of silence. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. may be seated. Could I have a roll call, please? Mayor Greeslock. Here. Mr. Hizzi. Here. Mr. Pudge. Here. Mr. Stevenson. Here. Mr. Crite. Here. Mr. Adams. Here. Mr. Williams. Here. Mr. Biondo. Here. Mr. Graziani. Here. Mr. Ratcher. Here. Ms. Rock. Here. Mr. Hugis. Here. Mr. Sedlak. Here. Mr. Weldon. Here. Welcome. We're going to open the meeting with our Citizens' Night period. This will be a time for any resident or taxpayer to address council on any municipal item. We always ask you to keep your comments to a five-minute time period. There will also be a comment period at the end of next week's regular council meetings uh, meeting. So if there's anyone from the public that would like to address council, now would be your time to do it. I'm Kim Crobden. I live at 156 Jamison Lane, and I'm just here to ask if there's been any progress with the determining who owns the right of way with the line from DCI to the property owner. That's your comment okay. at this point. That you don't have any other comments about the matter, though. Do I? Pardon me. You, you don't have any other comments about the matter. Do I? Yes. Well, I'm just. What I want to try to solve is. So we don't get too far off track. Right. I would allow you to have your comments so we don't get into a lot of long-term no, no, discussion. I'm, I'm just asking if, okay. they were, if they're making any effort. Do you know if they're making any effort to determine their ownership of the property? Have they come to the municipality and done a right to know or? Who, whose uh, ownership? Pardon me? Whose ownership? The DCI's ownership. You said ownership their ownership. For, yeah, their DCI's ownership for the, prop, for the line, their, the drain. To the best of our, to, from my understanding, DCI stormwater management ends at that catch basin. They own the storm system that the retention pond. Oh, so it stops at the fence. <coughs> it stops at that inlet. At that the is, inlet. You see, it stops at the inlet, and that's where their, their end terminates. And then from the inlet to Jameson, that is not owned by DCI. But it's also my understanding that they cleaned it out all the way from their pond to Jameson since our last meeting. They have? So Mr. Murphy and put it back in the fence. Okay. They, so they were, and we know it's not clogged, so it's not clogged anymore? They submitted a report that said they cleaned it from the detention basin to the street. Oh, they did go all the way to the street? Yes. Okay. All right. That's fair enough. Thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll leave the floor open for anyone who'd like to address council on any municipal item. <coughs> no takers. We're going to close that comment period. And we're going to move on to our agenda setting meeting. Next Tuesday, a week from today on the 14th, we'll be swearing in two police officers. And we also have two proclamations for next Tuesday as well. I have an executive session announcement. The council conducted an executive session on Tuesday, April 30th. 2024 from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. regarding the Monroeville Convention Center and on Tuesday, May 7th, 2024 from 6.15 to approximately 7 p.m. for personnel and litigation reasons. Council legislative action, if any, shall be taken at next Tuesday's May 14th council meeting. Council, the minutes for this month. We will be approving the Citizens' Night meeting of April 2nd, 2024, the council agenda setting meeting of April 2nd, 2024, and the regular council meeting of April 9th, 2024. Any questions, comments, corrections, or additions? <coughs> council. Hearing none, the tax collections. Any questions or comments, Council? Hearing none, list of bills and budget transfers. Does anyone have any questions or comments regarding those? Hearing none, we're moving on to our payroll report. Questions or comments, Council? None. Right. Very good. Hearing none. And once again, 
This is not a voting meeting. We will consider these items at next Tuesday's May 14th council meeting at 7 p.m. Moving through the agenda, bids and proposals. We have three to consider this month. Mr. Graziani, please. In your packet, there's memorandums from the Public Works and Engineering Director, Mr. Hugis. And I think it's pretty self-explanatory. I would encourage council to take time to review that and the proposals that were received. And if you have any questions about specific roads um, and what the program entails, we'll certainly entertain those so that you'll be ready to vote on those next week. Any questions or comments about the business proposals, Council? Very good. Moving over to our consent agenda, we have old business 24-2-SUB dash dash Roy Musser. Mr. Graziani, please. Yeah, the applicant is requesting preliminary and final subdivision approval to subdivide tax parcel 861-A-119 dash dash into three lots. Lot 1 with an acreage of 0 0.1056 acres. <coughs> lot 2 with an acreage of 2.0991 acres and parcel A with an acreage of 0 0.7925. In the S Conservancy Zoning District, the property is located at 1876 Haymaker Road. Variances were granted for the proposed nonconformities created by the Subdivision and Zoning Hearing Board, file number 24-1-A. Now, uh, we're awaiting, I guess, more information from this. We're looking at a tabling of it until the June meeting, um, and there's an attached request to that extent in your packet. Okay. okay, so yes, this item is currently tabled. So next Tuesday, if council does not take any action, that's what the applicant is requesting. It'll just remain on the table, uh, but certainly council could choose to remove it from the table and vote in the affirmative or against it. Any questions, council? Hearing none, we'll move over to our motions. We have two to consider for this month. Mr. Graziani? Yes, um, the first, is a motion to approve the property acquisition for the Tricog Land Bank for the property located on Mossside Boulevard, lot and block number 857M351. And this is uh, near Juniper Village. Mm. It's the property that fronts um, Mossside. There it is there, and you can see the library. Thanks, Jared, for having it up. I, I saw it, and I was like, wow, I don't think I did that, because I have it on my map, too. You can see the Senior Center, and Apparently, there were, in the past was a house there, yes. and yes. for a number of years, the municipality has been cutting grass and maintaining the what would be considered the western portion of the property. The front, you'll see Juniper Village has an access road on it, um, but apparently the property for at least 2006 has not been paying taxes or doing things like that, so we're working with the, the land bank for that acquisition. So apparently Juniper Village has an easement through there? They okay. do. Okay. Yeah. And they maintain that part? Right. Yes. That's their access, because you can imagine the driveway permit mm -hmm. wouldn't be feasible for them to be able to come out <clears throat> directly in front Correct. of their facility. <clears throat> Any questions? Next item. That was very good to see, Jared. Thank you. I appreciate that. A motion to advertise an ordinance to amend ordinance 2784, the fee 2024 fee schedule remove the miscellaneous fee section under timber harvesting section of the ordinance. Um, just a housekeeping item that we could have done. We've already removed some of the language, but we just didn't catch up on the fee side. Yeah, basically what happened is, is that um, we amended uh, in order to comply with the state law called ACRE. That's an acronym that agricultural something or other. Agricultural lobby got this law passed in Harrisburg and it's really not appropriate for um, suburban communities and um, populated cities and so forth, but it applies everywhere in the state, so we have to live with it. So um, one of the things that we did was we had to change the fee schedule to comply with the state requirements. Now, the, the fee schedule is not in the ordinance. It's on the fee schedule that council adopts every year. And we just didn't think of it at the time. It was an omission on our part. And this has remained in there, and it was called to our attention that it was in there. And so uh, I've spoken to the Attorney General's office, and they said, just take it out, and we're happy. And so that's what we're doing. So and what, what it says basically is the municipality cannot charge any miscellaneous fees for engineering or other costs they incur related to um, timber harvesting uh, permits and applications. So um, that's all it really is. As Alex said, it's really housekeeping to put it where it should be. Any questions, Council? 
Very good. We will consider this next Tuesday. Moving through the agenda, we have one ordinance to consider for this month. Mr. Batcher. An ordinance of the municipality of Monroeville to amend ordinance number 1435 to exempt non-union administrative employees from the requirement that they establish and maintain domicile in the municipality throughout the term of their employment with the municipality. And this is really just a housekeeping item as well and as, as that really at this point uh, the only group that's subject to the residency requirement in 1435 I believe are the uh, refuse and um, public works public works yeah so everybody else uh, is either represented by a union that's bargained that uh, bargained that uh, requirement away and the only people that left that were left really are those of you who are not represented by a union Correct. and so you can live wherever you like now after Tuesday, Tuesday. once we pass yeah, yeah maybe. Maybe. well theoretically you can do it now but <laughs> yeah officially any questions, Council? Very good. Moving to our reports of staff, Mr. Ratcher. <clears throat> Nothing. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Graziani. Yeah, I just want to give Jared kudos and to the staff of Monroeville Television for the reboot of the Monroeville at your service program. Uh, mm -hmm. Tremendous capacity that we have here in municipality to produce high quality, informative programming. And he also broke it up into segments. So if someone doesn't want, want to watch the whole thing or doesn't have cable, they can watch the segments on YouTube. Uh, just a great resource. I'm committed to communicate as best possible the outstanding work that's going on in this municipality and help the citizens realize all the full services that we provide here. So what a privilege to work with that team and see that show come together. And uh, next month, um, Joe was our featured guest this past month. We talked about the Jack Sedlak cleanup day. But uh, Chief Cole, I know you're going to really want to watch it because Chief Cole is going to be a featured person this upcoming month, and it's going to be great. We'll get out a lot of popcorn. <clears throat> Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Mr. Graziani? That's it for your report. Okay, very good. Mr. Hugus. <laughs> Nothing. He can't top, he can't top that one, can you, Paul? <laughs> I can't follow up. Thank you. Doug's on TV. <laughs> wait to see that. <laughs> Moving to our reports of council members. <laughs> Mr. Hizzy. Yeah, I got a couple things. I want to congratulations to Joe on a great job he did on the Jack Sedlak things. Clean up. Uh, I wish more people would come out and help us. We had a small turnout this year, but Joe, hell of a good job. Also, my uh, sincere condolences to uh, Lel Morasco's family. Uh, Lel was an employee here, passed away. I knew her very well. And for last but not least, happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Mr. Poach. Thank you, Joe. I almost forgot about the mother's day. Yes, you'll you do not that. do that. To, to my, no, not to my 95-year-old my mother will be texting me in a few seconds to tell me that there's something wrong with that, too, as well. Um, just a quick second uh, to, to bar the bully pulpit for a second, too. Recently, um, REMS and, and fire services have been doing a fantastic job on a couple of things where people have walked away in some cardiac arrests. I don't think people realize um, we average about 55 to 60 of these the resuscit resuscitations a year from in and out of the field weekly. It happens, uh, and as, as well as uh, some that you know we respond to that aren't aren't be able to be resuscitated. But as recently as last month, I know the folks at Number One participated. Uh, I was a pickleball player over here too, and Barry's gone home. He's home waiting some other sincerities. So that chain of survival is extremely important. We just had another one recently. Uh, a colleague of ours, um, Shirley Gottman's uh, husband, is still quite critical, and you know, we hope for the best for him as well. It was in, uh, this past week, but again, we you know, had him resuscitated. I visited the, in the ICU on Sunday, you know, to do that. But the the biggest thing that has happened, and I just to push out to everyone else, is to take the opportunity to go ahead and make sure you learn CPR. In e all of these cases where people are being successfully resuscitated, we've had it happen right here, matter of fact, you know, to do that, um, is CPR and get an mm -hmm. AED onto people very quickly, you know, to do that too. So take that opportunity. I think we'll try to, to work that into uh, this next work with the locally fire department to do that, continue with their, you know, to conduct those classes too. So take the chance to do it and good luck to everyone else. That's, that's it. Thank you, Mr. Poach. Mr. Stevenson. Uh, I just have one item, Mayor. Uh, about a month or so ago, the library came to council and wanted to add 10,000 square feet uh, 
to the library at a cost of over $10 million. Before we move any further or have any more meetings on that, I think we need to figure out if the 10,000 square foot addition is warranted. And here's how we can do that. I'm, uh, I'm uh, asking the, the manager at this point to check the device that counts the number of people that go into the library on a daily basis and report that back to council. We need to know exactly how that device works. Does it count people going in to the library? Does it count them going out? Does it count the 14 full-time staff members that go in and nope. go out? Does it count the volunteers that go in and go out? Does it count the postmen, the delivery people? We need to know that and so we can get an accurate count and see how many residents are using it and we need to make sure that, that those people are not counted on a daily basis. Uh, I think a week's worth of daily data would show us enough data to, to make an intelligent decision on the library's use. We also need this information so we can determine whether an addition is needed at the library. We need to make sure that your taxpayer dollars <coughs> are being spent wisely. We currently spend almost $2 million a year to fund the library. We need to look very closely at that funding in our up and coming budget. If we're spending almost $2 million a year on a library that services a small percentage of our population, we need to direct some of those funds elsewhere, such as the Senior Center, Parks Department, or let's not forget capital improvement projects that service 100% of our population. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Stevenson. Mr. Crutt. I have nothing, thank you. Mr. Adams. Nothing tonight, Mayor. Mr. Williams. Uh, so <coughs> often we, uh, our service men and women, we thank them for their service, but here we're coming to Mother's Day, and I want to wish the mothers uh, thank you for your service, because you're the ones that held the families together as our men and women went overseas, and our, our, most of our fathers were working, our and you held the family together. So uh, thank you for your service. The other thing is, i uh, got a flyer here. Uh, we're going to be a Memorial Day parade, May the 27th, and our participants are required to meet at the corners of Route 22 and 48 at Valley Honda. So these parades are always good. Uh, it's enjoyable to be in them, and I plan on being there. So come on out and see the parade. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Mr. Biondo. Uh, yeah, just briefly to follow up on uh, what Mr. Stevenson said, I, I think there is yearly data, and maybe it would be better to have a, the yearly snapshot of the people in and out as opposed to a one uh, weekly, uh, you know, one week frame, uh, frame of reference. Um, and I, I do believe that those are numbers that are, I don't want to say easily obtainable, but at least obtainable f from, uh, from Nicole or someone else in the library. Yeah. yeah. Um, and other than that, just happy Mother's Day to everybody out there, all the moms out there. And that's all I have. Thank you. And then uh, these items were already mentioned before, but cleanup day, uh, you know, I want to congratulate uh, Mr. Sedlak, puts in a lot of hard work every year, and uh, it was a success. It was nice. Weather was nice. It held out. We, we the rain held out. We picked up a lot of garbage. Yeah, People were worried about. It. But yeah. Joe, you do a great job every year in honoring your father, and we really appreciate organizing all of it. It takes a lot of hard work, and all the staff that came out. We had our, our parks crew um, over at the community park um, helping serve the food. Uh, Mr. Adams was uh, cooking the hot dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people in attendance, and uh, it was a really nice event as it always is. So, great job, Joe. And uh, yeah, condolences to the Morasco family. I, I got to know Lael uh, over the past several years. She was a very special woman, a very nice woman. I saw her last, actually it was in the news about the young man who got the national award at uh, Chick-fil-A, got the scholarship. That was Lael's grandson, mm -hmm. actually. So I saw her at Chick-fil-A that afternoon. Alex and I, Alex met her as well, and uh, she was, uh, couldn't be more proud that day of her grandson, and she was a, a nice lady, and uh, and she'll definitely be missed. And uh, and then with that, I just want to wish everybody, all the mothers, a very happy Mother's Day this weekend. So could I have a motion to adjourn, please? So move. Is second. there a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you, and good night. Yeah. Okay, you must move this.